Hi, everybody, and welcome to Sunday, and we're going to finally get started on what we missed last week. <laughs> Sorry about that. We had windows put in, and it took longer than was expected, but when I left you last week, we had left this kind of bear, so I'll show you on the album we're working on, and then this piece was was done you just had to basically lay it down so we're going to be working on the back of page four and then we're going to get page five done and the plan is we're going to get this done and then we will be back to our regular wednesday and wednesday we're going to do the cover decorating and we'll do our spine so i'm going to tell you right now what you might need <clears throat> I, I i'm using on mine the the corset type of ribbon and i don't have a piece down here and i meant to grab to show you so but if you don't have that you can use a border punch i'm going to show you a border punch that works really great and of course i <clears throat> i didn't grab it Um, this is a really great little border punch. It's an older one, and I like to use it. Let me just get a scrap here to show you what it does. Um, basically, instead of punching holes and creating um, eyelets, you may have seen it done that way, because that is a really lot of work. So when you punch this completely out... This type of a border punch, and I'll show you, if you have one like this, a scallop, that has these holes that you can lace your ribbon through, this is perfect. You just need to be able to bring a, like a seam binding through that is not heavy weight, and we'll lay it down, and it'll become our corset. Or you can definitely use... Um, I, I pulled that up. I need to E6000 it down again. This is that corset ribbon that you can purchase. Just to let you know. <laughs> Sorry about that. I've kind of gone brain dead. But anyway, these holes will work great. This is an older punch that I have. You may have a Fiskars or a Martha Stewart that will give you that same benefit just so we can lace through. So let me show you where I left you guys last time. I can't even say last week because we didn't do it last week. Um, we had, I had left you with this page unmatted and this page unmatted. But I did give you the dimensions, so it's back on part three. So I went ahead and did map mine using the pink on the back. Remember, and then we were using the one inch at the top. And this was created into a pocket. Again, I used the one inch strips on each side. I did have to trim this one down to about seven eighths and this to seven eighths. But they still look symmetrical. And these two sides are eight and three eighths and this middle one became six and three eighths. But just, you know, I'm, I did go through that on part three with you, even though we didn't map. This was very simple. Just did the matting on the page. And then I used this really big border punch. Again, my punches are really old, so you can also cut them. And I use this just as what I call a faux pocket. And what happens there is it's just a place where we can put a few cut aparts. And I will be matting. The cut apart like I did on the green one. We'll call this the green one. 
with the wedding rings and I still want the wedding rings. So that will sit inside of there. So here we are then. We're on the back of page four and then we're going to do page five. And we're going to be done with the actual construction. And Wednesday, then we're going to do the decorating. So we're getting there. We're getting there. Just sorry about the delay. So let's get started then with the back of page four. Now back of page four, we're going to have some cutting to do. And the main thing is you're going to want to start with your base. Turn it this way. Make sure that is the one that I used and show you so that it's easier to see the finished project to see what I'm talking about. <laughs> I think that helps. So you're going to need this piece right here. And it was put in the cutting guide. I did not copy and paste it for here. I meant to, but it is in the announcement when I posted this. So this one is on the back of the page. I need to get to the right tutorial. Sorry, we got quite a few of them here going on. And I have to count my pages. <laughs> so back of page four. I have this little flap and I will need a magnet it is three by four and a quarter and i cut it three by four and a quarter so it would fit the cut apart with the cake because this is going to be dedicated to the cake and then your two flaps here you can see how we're going to be cutting into the page these are four and a half by six and a half and really you can make them a different size if you need and it's not going to matter how you lay them down I just kind of wanted that, you know, cool, symmetrical look. And then there'll be a magnet here and on our main page. So we got to remember to put our magnets down. And I do have my magnets. And there's stuff. And they're still stuck. They were rescue magnets. And so now they're stuck together from projects that you know sometimes you just have old product projects you don't finish and you toss but you got to take them apart and keep your magnets there we go so those are ready okay let's get started base page is eight and three eighths by eight and three eighths And again, you're going to be working with this off the page in just a minute. We have to, to put our four and a half by six and a half inch pieces that we're going to score at half inch. With the four and a half at the top of your scoreboard, go ahead and score at half inch. And we're going to repeat with our second one. Super easy. I'm just uh, making sure we're showing up in all the on authentic. There we go. Okay, that's oh, we have to score this piece, the three by four and a quarter. So I put the four and a quarter at the top and I'm scoring at half inch. Oh, I just went through it. Okay, so with the four and a quarter at the top again, there we go, score it. Now, the video looks okay on my side, but I'm on Authentique, and it's not showing up, so I'm hoping if you're on a Facebook group that this is coming through. I don't think it is. So let me check. 
who's watching from Facebook? And if you're watching from Facebook, are you seeing it okay? Authentic. There we go. What's not? No. Hmm. It must just be my phone. So I did cut the matting, and I will go through that with you because we're going to go ahead and mat this little piece first so we have it ready because we have to put a magnet back here. But for the pink, I did cut my pink at 2 and 7 eighths by 3 and 5 eighths. And then I cut my 3 by 4 cut apart to fit. So you'll just need to trim it down barely. There's a black border around the cake. You'll see that you just trim that off. And that's going to go on the front because this is the beginning page of where I want to show um, the cake. And I just noticed that my paper, one side is smooth, one side's texture. <laughs> I put it on the smooth side, but it doesn't matter. It's just kind of funny. I don't usually do that. Thanks for checking. I don't know. Just my and then. Who knows? Internet's crazy these days. making sure it's down then I cut a piece of pink for the back and it's three and five eighths by two and seven eighths um, not that I'll put anything back there probably it's just you know you need it finished and you want it to look nice and then we can go ahead and take our two four and a half by six and a half pieces that we've scored at half inch and let's go ahead and burnish those score lines. Now, we're not going to really put this on the page yet. So you also want to determine the direction you want this to go. And when laying down your doors, so we're going to call these doors. I'll have one at the right, right side and one at the left side. And then just placing them down and see where you want them to go. The main thing to remember is you need room on this outside edge. You want to make sure that you're going to have enough room that your paper won't tear. You don't want anything to happen to the paper, of course. And so you can just lay them out in the direction you want. You can cross them over as much as you want. Um, whatever, you know, I'm not going to give you dimensions on it. This is kind of one of those things I, I think you just play with and then you see what you like. Sometimes I just, <laughs> I put them down and I start cutting them where it lands, it lands. So this one was a little more straight and then I angled this top one. So kind of just what is the look that you want. So this one could go more straight and I could bring this one over the top to kind of give you that idea. And then sometimes when you go to the cutting phase, it doesn't quite turn out as planned. So it's going to go whichever one you want. But you need to make sure you're wherever it's going to land. That's why we made this first. So there's going to be a magnet back here, and you want it to be strong enough to hold your papers. So we'll just kind of go like that. And if you're happy with it, I'm just going to hold the right hand one. This is black, so it's going to be pretty hard to see. Totally, totally up to you. You might want to just draw a line. You can make two dots with your pencil at the top. Sometimes you can see it. Let's see what happens here. But you don't want it to leave a mark, of course. So I want to make a circle at the top and end. And if you can see that well enough, you could move your paper away. But I'm using such a dark one, I'm afraid to do that. 
So however you feel that you can do this straight, I'm going to take my cutter. Yeah, it's already off. That's okay. We'll move it over. I'm going to poke a hole here. And poke a hole at that end. Now I can see the holes better than I can see the pencil mark. I'm just going to grab my handy dandy chipboard ruler because <laughs> I don't care if I accidentally cut into this. Find that hole and that top one. They may not be even, so now's your chance to even them up or decide if you want to cut the line just however it naturally goes. And that's pretty much what I do. Then we'll take our page. You won't see any of this if you've cut it too long. Because once you glue it down, it you're not going to see any of it. It's pretty self-healing. We won't attach that in there yet. And even if it's not straight, you're still not going to see a boo-boo. That's what's so nice about this. It's really forgiving. But I am going to take this next one now and place it. I want it to be a little off. So I'm going to turn this around. Again, if you don't, if you feel that you wouldn't cut into your paper, you can just use your paper as your border. And that cutting that hole like that kind of makes it so that. Um, the paper doesn't tear because it makes like that circle. So try and start there. And if you're comfortable, just cut along the page. It'll sort of lift. Make sure you did not cut into there. <laughs> like I said, this is very forgiving. And unless you're trying to do things perfectly straight and perpendicular to each other, you're going to be just fine. So, no, it goes this way. I had it right the first time. If you accidentally tear a corner or anything, don't worry. Trust me, it's going to be glued down solid and it doesn't show. And I think this is kind of fun to do because it's like a surprise. You just don't really know unless you are you want to measure it so it's perfect. You just don't know where your pages will end up. And that is okay. Like I said, unless you're going to measure it perfect and know exactly. And I ended up with a little more space than I did over here. So that's going to be really a cute uh, decorating spot. And before I put these down, I do want to map the page because it's going to be easier. So now these became four by six and a half. And my matting is going to be three and seven eighths by six and three eighths. And the back will just be pink. And these are three and seven eighths by six and seven eighths or six and three eighths. My coordinating color. And on the back, now I'm not too worried about where my magnet is going to go. It's going to depend on where I put it here. So on our little closure, I'm just going to put it all oh, about an inch and a half down from the top. I will need some more square tape because I did pull these off a rescue project that was going in the garbage.
I'll save him for later. And put this away so I don't cut my finger off. And now we can add our cardstock to the top. Sure, magnets down. Okay, you can set this aside nice and heavy now that we've double matted that piece. And I had to change mine because um, I made some cards in between and wasn't thinking <laughs> for some a friend of my husband's that got married, and I, I used up all my plaid. So I am going to change from the original, just so you know. If you don't. Oh. You know what? I'm going crazy. What can I say? I didn't even look at the back side. Oh my gosh. Can you just say face plan on the head? I was thinking I was out of the <laughs> It's been one of those weeks. What can I say? So I am using the plaid. Forget what I just said. This though, I went with the pink. I was out of. So it'll be the same. My brain is not the same, but it will be the same. <laughs> I already did matte. I mean, I already did ink the edges three and seven eighths by six and three eighths. And this would look nice too if you just wanted to do a solid wedding color and put the cake pictures on the front. I'll still put pictures on the front. It just the pink will be on the inside. Okay, like I said, just pink on the back. I still had that. I, you know, I don't know why I didn't look on the back. But the thing is, I wanted the plaid because, it, you know, sometimes you have a groom's cake and then the girl's cake. Uh, I mean, the bridesmaid, some weddings will do that. A groom's cake and then the bridesmaid cake. And I was wanting the plaid for that. Sad I was out, but I'm not out. <laughs> okay. Those are ready, but Remember, we need to have our page because there has to be the magnet put down. The magnet needs to be put down. So we're just going to kind of do a faux walkthrough. So if you have your magnets there, that will be great. And if you have some clothes pins so we can get the placement of our magnet, you'll definitely be a lot happier <laughs> that you didn't forget the magnet. And then I just want to basically stick my pages in or my flaps in. 
Um, these aren't the way they're going to go. I'm going to change it, but it doesn't matter because they're the same size. Then this will give me a basic idea where my net magnet needs to be. And then I can just slide it under there and let it grab a hold of my flap. So that's holding it down. You can't really see my magnet, but there's a sticky back on it. Okay, come on. Score tape there. Put it back down so it, it finds its home. And you may have an easier way, but for me, that works. And that's where its home is. This one I am going to secure. I need to secure it. Yes. And see, we had we had our flap underneath the paper. So you'll probably have to move this to just a little bit, possibly. Because I had that wrapped. We're not going to wrap it, of course. I should have done that before. But now we have a basic placement. Of where our magnet goes. Then we can put this down first. Of course, we want to hide it under here. Okay. Then we can straighten that up. One more look. That looks great. So we need to put these on before we put our page down. Remember which side is which. So we're going to put the first one through. Remember, if your page buckles, there you go. Just fix it. And it might. I just lift my flap open. Add my adhesive. And then check the front. Because you want it. You do want this tucked under. Put that up to there. Just like so. So I'm putting the adhesive actually on the paper. I'll tell you why. It gives me a minute more to turn it over and then see, push it in. You want to push it in. Gives you a minute to do that. Adjusting. Call it your adjusting period. <laughs> And just like so, we're ready to put it in the page. I did already ink around my edges with the black. Like I said, I have a little spot there that's torn. And you're not even going to know it here in just a minute.
Okay. And I do want to glue down that half inch score line. Just make sure you put a little extra adhesive there. Fill it all in. Especially those edges. That's kind of like the border on the front. Do a quick check. We're good. Make sure that it's down secure. Like wallpapering, push that glue around. And that's that page. It's actually extremely easy. And then I just took on this one, so I'll do the same too when we go back to decorating. These were just some enamel um, gold dots. So I put on here, and I'll probably use silver on mine. And then as you can see over here, you'll have, there we go. You ha, if you have any of that paper sticking up, because you're not going to see it. But you do not, I don't, like, I like to have it, see how mine's lifting just a hair? Because um, you don't want to glue it down so it doesn't open. But if you have to, see, then you can add just a little bit of adhesive and it will glue down that edge of the paper if you had any sticking up and so that let's check both sides you see i can get in there well get that paper down and it finally will pop and i do i see you really can't see it i have a little tear there so i'm going to just add a little adhesive into the tear itself and then it just lays down and becomes part of the the matting which is nice you don't notice it you don't have to worry about tearing it out don't get your glue too far down under there or you can mess with the hinge just a little bit then decorate that wedding cake up and it's really a pretty showcase I think to put the cake in there the bride and the groom on the sides and that's it for that page see that's really an easy page so our next one is the beginning of page five and we just have the pocket that is horizontal and then I did use the border punch and I'm going to show you some people are really good at getting the ends perfect and I'll show you kind of how you can do that. And then I did a 12 by 6 mat just with our leftover cardstock, scored it at 6, and then you'll have some extra spaces. And then you can use your scraps and cut aparts to decorate with. Left the just married open. And of course, you can put other photos in there. So for your pocket, you want one piece of cardstock that is nine and a half and I did cut mine just short of nine and a half and I squished it last night <laughs> and it's five inches so it's just a hair short of nine and a half by five so that it will fit and I did cut a border strip and I want to show you so have you ever seen very very talented <laughs> people that can do this it takes practice but to get that really nice closed edge, if you're using your punch, of course, if you're using a Cricut or, or a Cricut maker, you can make it so it's perfect. But 
started down here on the end. This one makes a horde mess. Then you have the, the finished edge like it's supposed to be. And then you can continue on down. I cut this the same length as my matting, eight and three eighths. And I cut it about three inches wide. And then I punch it and follow my guides on my punch. And then see, I always get to this end where it's a little messy. Nothing you can do about it, really. So you can do some, depending on your punch, creative. There we go. Just some creative cutting to clean up that edge. And that's all you have to do. And then I cut it down so I have an inch. Very simple. So get those punches out. I know you have a drawer full that you're not using. Because <laughs> I do. And I forget about them. Okay. And the matting, we're going to make the pocket in just a minute. The matting is going to be three and seven eighths. And it's eight and seven, eight and three eighths, three and seven eighths by eight and three eighths. And so my border is eight and three eighths, but then I left about an inch at the bottom. So I'm going to be attaching it to the back side of our matting. Some like to put it into the pocket. I don't. I always mess it up. So that's that's how simple that one is to do. But with our pocket, we want to score it on all four sides. Remember how we're closing off the top edges so it looks really neat for a wedding album. I like to do that. So it doesn't matter where you start. We just want to score half inch on all four sides. I didn't push hard this time, so I'm going to be really careful <laughs> and go back over it. And then this is such a fun paper. I love this collection for a wedding album. because It can be for a new wedding, an anniversary, not just for weddings. Okay, so this, you can put it down at the bottom. It'll go either way. I wanted mine at the side. So I am going to check before we put it down our side to side to make sure. That's why I cut it just a hair short of the nine and a half. Then it sits in there nice and tight. I'm going to go ahead and burnish all the half inch score lines. Okay, we need to cut all four corners. And we're going to top. I like that all four, top and bottom. We're going to fold that top over so we have that nice finished edge. Wedding albums will get a lot more use than just um, a lot of others. And so that gives you that finished edge. We're going to glue that right down. And it doesn't take really any more paper, just an extra half inch. And then you've got a nice finished edge. Okay. I'm going to mat this too before I put it down, just so I have it on a flat surface. Corners look okay. And before I do the matting, I want to go ahead and add, like I said, the border to my matting, which is eight and three eighths. So my border is the exact same length. And I add that extra because I wanted it to have more to hang on to basically. And across the top. And then it has a little bit of the burgundy showing behind. Or you can put it at the top, but I wanted that burgundy showing. It gives you all three colors. The black and white and the burgundy, and, or black, burgundy, and pink. 
but I will be adding some um, lot back curls across the top when we go to decorate right across my paper line. Now's the time you can get all the fun embellishments out that you wanted to use for your weddings. Put this down in our album. Like it, remember, you can have it go horizontal or vertical. It can go either way. It'll be so fun to get this done and actually add pictures. And <laughs> we're still looking for our wedding pictures. <laughs> I, they're in a box. They're in an album in a box. So I know they're safe. It's just we had some construction and things a while back and we put them all away to be safe. And you know when you put things away to be safe and then you can't find them? They're that safe. Yeah. <laughs> they're extremely safe. Let me tell you. Make sure those edges are down. Then, do you remember how we filled in some of the spots when we did the waterfalls and we used the three eighths of a strip? So, I did do my first three. So, you'll want four of these. Let me show you. And I just chose the heart paper. It seemed to be kind of the most neutral. It'll just go with everything. And so I saved this one to show you. Very simple to do. But if you haven't done it, um, I just cut the strips the same length as my page matting, eight and three eighths. And then these are three eighths of an inch. I don't ink the edges on mine. They're small. I'm using black. And you know what happens sometimes with black? <laughs> Um, you could use the lace side too. It would go really nice. But I chose to just use the heart side on all four of my gussets. So you want four of these strips. I just add my adhesive and down the center it goes. And then you have a really nice finished look. For the matting, I did the wedding rings, which is the back of one of your cut aparts. And that's why I suggested the extra sheets. And this is six inches by eight and three eighths. I don't have it go all the way down. And we're going to check our fit first. So six by eight and three eighths down into our pocket. And those, no, those aren't going any special direction. There is the front, the back of four, the front of five, and I need to glue that down before we turn the page a little more on my pocket, it looks like, on the paper. There we go. Okay, back of page five. Last page. Yay, you guys, we're getting there. We'll be so ready to decorate on Wednesday back to normal time so for the back of page five again i had these tags 
and I will use some more. I just didn't get any cut. <clears throat> or you can just make your own tags to fit your pockets for whatever photos you like. And I did have to change. I know I did. I We'll see. I won't make any. I think my matting, I changed just a little bit. So you have this flap on the left. This is the goodbye when we're sending up the bride and groom or the bride and groom. So probably the bride and groom dance right here. And then the, the saying goodbye, mother, father dance, things like that is what will go on mine. Um, so we have a five inch flap here. We have a little bigger flap here, seven. I did not use any magnets for this. It's kind of a just a free flapping page. <laughs> you could use a magnet and there is actually one down there. But what happened due to the thickness of the matting and due to the tags, it won't stick. So I'm not putting any magnets on this page for me. I, it doesn't bother me to that. It, it doesn't have the magnets down, but you can definitely um, add them, but you need to place them maybe a little higher up because once you start loading it and this is pretty thick because of the eyelet and we have this double matting it got kind of thick so let me give you the measurements on those and we'll do the matting of course flat and then we'll put everything together so you need to have a seven by eight and a half inch flap that's going to be on the right hand side we have the smaller flap that's five by eight and a half. And then you'll have those two pockets. We're going to score again on all four sides. And these are six and a half by five. Again, I cut them a little short of six and a half so that they will fit nice and tight. They're going on our bigger flap. And then I have my matting all cut. Let me put that aside so I don't lose it. Let's start with the flaps first. And the first one is five inches. So you want the five inches across the top. We're going to score a half inch. The next one, the excuse me, seven inch one, we're going to score at half inch with the seven inch across the top. It's going over here to the left. So this will sit like so. And our pockets, again, just all four sides. We're going to close the top like we did on the bigger one. So just score half inch all around the perimeter of your pocket. I need to change this. There's a sharp spot. Oh, and here comes Wilbur. I'm going to go ahead and prepare the pockets first. So let's just. Oh, wait, no, we better. We should. Let's do the let's do our bigger flap first that the pockets are going to go on to so that we can make sure they fit. I have a funny feeling. I cut these too short. Oh, my gosh, I did. So. Let's keep these for something else because guess what? They're supposed to be seven and a half by. Oh, why did I do that? Oh, well. Seven and a half by five. You need two seven and a half by fives. And for where I posted the cutting guard, guide and everything authentic, I will get that fixed. Two seven and a half by five inch pieces. But you can save those for another project. And cut them short of seven and a half. Kind of echoes down here. So we have to score again. And we're going to score a half inch. Just like we did. I'll have to check my matting. 
think I did cut. Oh, I think I cut my matting fine. Just cut my pocket wrong. I'd rather cut the pocket wrong than the matting. So that means we waste powdered paper. Well, not really. We use it for something else. I'm not one of those that is a good pre-cutter because I do this. <laughs> I have to be very careful when I do pre-cuts. So you want to make sure, yeah, it's seven and a half. Make sure this is going to fit perfect. And as long as it does, you're good to go. We're going to create it, like I said, just like the big one, all four sides. I lost my scissors. Oh. We're just going to miter all four corners. My scissors are in front of me. They're my sharp ones. Oh, I think my brain is drying up. Or it has. One or the other. Still going to check the fit. This is going on the back side. Hinge will be on the right side. Now it's going to be on the left side. And I want to make sure this is going to fit and not hit the hinge and see it's going to stick over. I don't want it to stick over. So I'm going to trim. This is how you can fix your pocket. So I'm going to trim just right in that groove width. Then I'm going to rescore it. At half inch. Holding it from the opposite side will give you the leverage to push back on your new score line. Because it doesn't matter that the old one's there. It's not going to be seen. But now putting this to the outside edge. Because this is on the inside and you have that gusset there. I don't like when the pockets hang over. It drives me crazy. But you need it to be able. There we go. See, I need my hinge to be a working hinge. Now that's a better fit. And it fits perfectly in there. Okay. I need to remember. I'll put this on the back first. And that is the quickest way to fix a pocket and not have to cut a new one if it's too big. You're going to glue the top down again. So you want to add your adhesive to the inside. And then if you are just watching this for the first time and want to get caught up, don't forget in the video files, you can find the videos for one, two, and three of the wedding album with the authentic timeless. And you can go back and get all caught up and get your album made. So now I know this is going to be the backside one and it fits perfectly within there. So I'm going to add my adhesive. But uh, one, two, and three will, will take you back to the cover, creating our pages, and then it'll get you caught up to where we start today. Now, 
my pocket for the front is ready. Pockets are always nice um, for the bride to have because I was going through, and it's been 36 years, but I went through a bunch of stuff in my cedar chest and found cards that, you know, of relatives, of course, that aren't with us anymore that I want to put in my album, but I don't want to cut them or anything because they wrote in them. So now I can just slide them in the pockets because this album is for my wedding pictures. And pockets I have found on baby and wedding albums are really nice for that reason. There's cards you... I'm okay. Sometimes I'll cut them apart like I did my wedding announcement on this album. Put one piece in and one... I'll show you here in a second what I mean. But there are some cards you just don't want to cut because someone may have written something on there on one side that you still want to show or have to look back at the memory. Is that shorted on this? Um, well, Vanessa, did you catch that where I recut it at seven and a half, not six and a half? I goofed. If that's what you mean. Um, see, this was my wedding announcement. I lost those, so I recut them. Telling you, I'm having a week. <laughs> the only thing is, I used Wink Estella on this white, and it's a 36 year old white, and I didn't like it, so I may change that. But I was able to cut my invitation in half because there was nothing here. I just had some extra ones. But if it was a special card that you don't want to cut in half and hide the back, you can do it this way, or you can create, cut it in half and create these flaps for your cards right on the card itself and score the card at half inch and then use it as your flap. If you want to do that with your special cards, you can do that too. Just for an idea. Um, is that shorted on the six and a half inch side? No, I had to cut new ones. I'm not really 100% sure what you mean, Vanessa, but I think if you didn't catch that I cut these two short, they should be seven and a half. Then, um, yes, they are going to be short, and I'm sorry. So we're going to turn this to the back now, miter our corners. And I want to map this before we put it into our book. So I kind of did some pre-matting. Remember, it's going to be the Just Married, and I'm going to show you how I did this. So the Just Married is going on this pocket. But the back side is going to be the Mr. and Mrs. So I'm going to go through this matting with you. Your pocket now is four inches. And this pocket is four inches. So my matting is three and seven eighths by six and three eighths. Because now it's six and a half by four. And I take that eighth of an inch off each side. So that's what I did with, with this. I took my pink at three and seven eighths by six and seven eighths. And then I cut the cut apart just married to fit. So I'm going to go ahead and glue this one down. I used to think double matting took a lot of paper. And it can take a lot of paper. But let me tell you, when you have scraps... Um, I'm finding use that double matting. It just gives it more personality instead of just putting our cut apart down. Kind of, you know, helps it to pop on your page. And when it pops on the page, it's like it gets noticed. And so same size pocket, four inches by six and a half. So the back matting, which was uh, this piece that I had, <clears throat> three and seven eighths by six and three eighths. But my cut apart is four inches by six inches, so it's definitely too big. So I take my cut aparts and cut them out the size they're supposed to be. So we're going to use our cutter. So we know it's four inches, or you can measure it and make sure or it's pretty close to your four inches. That's why I'm not just going to take an eighth of an inch off of each side or you'll end up short. Manufacturers, are when, when they print, 
you know, things don't always fall in the perfect four by six inch. We wish they did, but they don't. But I knew my matting is three and seven eighths. And I apologize if you already know how to do this. So if it's if you do, you can definitely move on. But if you're new, this I hope will help. So putting my cut apart in my cutter, I can tell I have more border at the bottom than the top. So I'm going to place this at three and seven eighths. And I'm going to cut it off. So now it's three and seven eighths. But again, this is three and seven eighths. So we only need this to be three and three quarters. So I'm going to turn it this way now. And I'm going to take off just a sixteenth of an inch. These are little sixteenths in between. Or I'm going to turn it to this side because I want to keep it pretty much symmetric. You might hear Wilbur. <laughs> I have a new rug beneath me, and he, um, yeah, I put a rug under my desk and for warmth, and he's rubbing on it, of course. So now this is at three and three quarters, and then it kept it symmetrical, so it looks the same top and bottom. Now six and three eighths is my matting going this way. Going to fit perfect, see, because this is six inches, and we have the same amount. Now, if you want the exact same amount around on the sides, then you could definitely cut these down. I didn't want to cut them down, I like seeing a little bit of that wetting on the side, and so to keep it symmetrical, that's what I do. I just turn and turn and turn, taking off until I get to the size I know for my double matting. I, I even call this double matting because here's our first layer and our double, our second layer. And that is the easiest way I have found to keep it all the same. So I don't have a whole bunch at the top and not, not you know, very much at the bottom. And I did the same thing with the card. So now let's go ahead and if you're going to distress your edges so it all blends in nice for this one I'm going to put my matting down first because I made my pocket shorter before I cut my matting this will be fine this is not so I just need to take a little bit off Remember, I had to redo this for my there go, for my um, hinge. Okay, we'll put that down first. And center that there. And there we have the new Mr. and Mrs. that will go right here. Then the matting for the top of this page. I think this is where I did change some matting. I originally had, oh, I did. I, I didn't have any more of the lace. I pretty much exhausted my stock of lace on this album the top of it and some cards so this will be the same and I'll give you those so this is going to be the same with the car because I wanted it to match the matting on the back of the card but for the inside I'm going to use the back side of the hearts instead and everything with this paper will go together so that's what's nice so for Mr. and Mrs., we're going to put in the heart piece that is six and three eighths. 
and I cut mine at five. This one I knew we'd have to cut down a little bit because of the pocket. My desk is now the opposite of what it was before. <laughs> so I'm having to find things as I'm working. I'm used to everything being to the other side for my left hand, but now it's to the right hand. Oh, Vivian, you were uh, did you get to go inside? If you did, I'm glad to hear that. So measure it. Once if it's too tight, just take a tiny bit off. But it should be about six and three eighths by five. five. Um, or you can take it all the way down if you like. I don't. Nobody really looks down your pockets. I hope. And then with all your leftover cardstock, you can make tags or you can use pre-made tags if you have any. Um, anything you like to sit in there. But again, that's definitely where some cards will go. It's going to burnish that down. And the plaid is the same size. Six and three eighths by five. And again, it matches the background on the cut apart. So I really, really did want this one. The plaid for here. So I'm still going to need that. Oh, well, that's nice too. I thought maybe you got to go in. See, and it makes it just blend together. And there's no directional, which is another benefit. <laughs> you don't have to worry which end is up. There we go. And after this one, it, it'll be um, still available right here in the Authentique um, video files. So if you just go into videos, you'll find all the others and on the YouTube channel. So you'll be able to... Go back with your Authentic Timeless and put your album together. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and put this one down first since it's done. And it's going to be the very last page back of page five with the pocket. And it's sitting over here to the right hand side. Smashed it. Turn it sideways. Remember, you want to just keep it so it's not to the there we go, completely to the bottom of the page, just a hair above it. I love that graphic. That is just adorable. Okay, now we'll push our half inch seam down. If you're using a wet adhesive, and that's the secret with wet adhesive, making sure you're spreading that glue out just like it was wallpaper and then your papers will always be flat okay. now we're going to do this little flap to the right that sits underneath that we've already scored our half inch so now our flap becomes four and a half inches by eight and a half and the matting for this one is going to be out oh, the hearts. Nope, the polka dots. This one's going here. This one's going here. Actually, it's going to be the hearts and the polka dots. <laughs> polka dots are going to go on the inside. 
and I need to cut mine a quarter of an inch off. Um, that I made this four and a half so that four by six photo could fit here or four by fours. But I cut my matting wrong. So your matting only needs to be four and three eighths, not four and three quarters. Oh, I can do it on my big one. So four and three eighths by eight and three eighths. I'm pretty sure that one's off. Yes. Instead of the lace, I'm using the hearts. It'll blend it into the the pocket, the Mr. and Mrs. pocket. So to that, I'm gonna re-ink that. And the same with my polka dot. Perfect. Four and three eighths by eight and three eighths. Hello. Oh, yeah, I grabbed it. Sorry, guys. It's uh. Thank you, though. I'm not used to doing shows on Sunday. I used to do them all the time, so that was really nice. My husband just brought me down. He didn't think I had my water. <laughs> okay. Miter my corners. We'll put the top on. And down goes the flap, and then we just have to mat the inside, and we are done. And Wednesday at 11, we will be completely done, and you'll have your wedding album ready to go. And hopefully by then, I will find my wedding pictures <laughs> so that I can get them in there. I just love this side. So classic. This one is directional, so I did want to make sure my hearts whoops, are going the right direction. Wow. Okay. It's not straight. I don't know what I'm doing here. There we go. Yeah, I knew it wouldn't be stuck in a few places. Um, I think we do Diane I know that um yes I I've got I've got to restock the store with timeless there is more the quantity um the quantity does is off in the website and I will fix that right after because we do have plenty and I just didn't get caught up with it because we were, I was trying to get everything put back together because I didn't want to be, I didn't want to be late doing the show today. <laughs> I put it off and I felt so bad, but we didn't know our windows were going to take a week, <laughs> but it's okay. Our well, old, their ones were so old. They just had a hard time. That blends really nice. I like this. So to give you an idea on the walk through. So this, this original one is different. See it's the lace. That looks nice too. And then the polka dots. And we'll be doing this. And again, the hearts were there. So kind of gives it a different, different look. 
and we're going to just now to this outer edge of our page. And again, when I when I say eight and a half, my page is eight and a half. But remember, I always cut just a hair short so things fit inside nice and neat. But I like to just tell you a half inch and then you can adjust it. It's easier to cut a little off than to add it. You know, I'm finding with this heavier paper, um, I'm not needing as many magnets. I love, love the magnets, but I really am finding I don't have to have any because by the time we do all this matting, it just lays down really nice. So let's do the inside. Okay, we've added flaps. Sometimes that takes up, it's like when you drywall. Um, your a room, you lose a little bit of footage. Kind of what happens to the inside here. We're going to lose a little bit, so we want to measure. Get everything down, especially on the corners. So it's always best to measure. It may not change much. Or you can just <clears throat> cut the normal length and see how well it fits in there. Just all depends on where you lay your 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 half inch hinges there. So my eight and three eighths looks fine. I don't have to trim it. And then the bottom piece, I'll give you these measurements. So I did it so it has that those two different looks. And the top piece is five and three quarters by eight and three eighths. Five and five and three quarters by eight and three eighths. And then the bottom matting is going to be two and a half by eight and three eighths. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I'm going to put my biggest piece down first. And I'm well, I'm not going to like adhere it down yet. Just going to let it sit there with a the clothespin for a minute. And I want, because I want to make sure that space there isn't too much. I want a little bit, but I don't want a big gap between my papers. So we look fine. Um, we can put it down as long as you're happy with the way it looks. And I always like to emphasize <clears throat> the tutorial. I may be using the Timeless Wedding, the Authentic. But um, any of the timeless papers, especially the new, <clears throat> excuse me, Voyage, and don't forget, there's also still their school line. This would be a really cool designed album for that, especially for Voyage for the vacations. And there's Hurrah if you wanted to do a birthday album, which I've talked about before. I'd really like to do this as a birthday from first year to 18 or to adult with Hooray. The birthday line because it'll be so cute. And you don't have to put a, a whole like one year's worth of birthdays. Break it down to each year, just add another birthday in. And the hooray collection would work really well with this. And it also would go well with the calendar lines that Authentic has. So perfect fit. Again, it's two and a half inches by eight and three eighths for the matting.
Okay. We're done with the pages, the page construction. So how cool is that? Now we went back and did a little bit of decorating, but we'll do more. Um, we'll do more on Wednesday at 11. We will create. Let me show you what we have left to do. We just had this little decoration. This was a die, so I will be cutting it again. It's just an older doily die I had, and so I'll be cutting that. I won't be putting down the pearls. Um, that, you know, everybody will have something different, the flat back. But I will do the flowers. This is just some netting that I put along with the dress. So if you have any netting in your stash, it makes it just kind of come alive. We've got to create this piece that has our flap on the back just so it holds it better and we'll just go through and then put in the little touches here and there we'll create our cover <clears throat> with the cut apart and then we'll create the spine on wednesday morning now so wednesday morning i did already show you sort of what you can use the different things and if you don't want to of course you can watch the video first and then you can go back I'll, I'll have the ribbon binding to show you what I used underneath, but I did show the punch in the beginning. And I'm, I always suggest if you're going to use the seam binding, three to five yards, just so you have enough to lace it up. But there we have it. See, I just have to go back and do a few things here and there that I left off when we were doing our tutorial. We'll add in, like I said, those little touches on Wednesday at 11. We'll be back to normal on the time. Not much different that we did here. I'll probably add something now down here because it gave me a little more space. And I'll have my tags cut put in. And we are like 90% of the way done. So I will see you Wednesday back at our normal time. And that is, yeah, what's normal time, guys, right? <laughs> 11 a.m. Mountain Standard Time. So there won't be another cutting guide. The cutting guide is listed with each video for this project. And you can go back, like I said, in the video files. And you can see the different tutorials for our wedding album with the Authentic Timeless. And don't forget that we do still have it available. As I'm just kind of putting a few things here so I don't lose anything else. And um, we will get it completely done. So thank you, everybody, for joining me. It was great. And um, I'll see you on Wednesday. Bye-bye.